people missing tonight i thought about I, I, I mentioned to harold i said i was going to send out a text message church is canceled tonight for halloween just kidding what kind of church do you think we are um but i don't think it would be appreciated by everybody there's probably somebody on the internet mad at me right now um it's all right uh let's go to the lord in prayer and ask god's blessing on the service and uh, i'm glad you come hopefully the lord blesses you for being here tonight and uh, I, I'm excited about the message tonight. It's not really an exciting topic, but it's an important topic for us to understand, and I think it'll be helpful to you. So let's pray, and, uh, and then we'll take some favorites tonight. All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your goodness to us. Thank you for your mercy and your grace. Lord, I pray that you'll be with our church family tonight. I pray that you'll help them. Lord, I people in our church family that are going through uh, deep waters, going through health problems, have pressing concerns on them tonight. And I pray that you'll, be, you'll bless them and you'll help them. Lord, I know that there's folks that have uh, big surgeries coming up. I know that there's folks that are going through cancer treatments and, Lord, uh, many other uh, concerns. And, Lord, we pray that you'll bless them and help them and, and be a, a special encouragement to them tonight. Father, I pray that you'll uh, help us as a church family to walk with you, to stick with the, stick with the stuff and stay, stay to the truth. And uh, Lord, I pray that you'll use us, uh, Lord, as we seek to reach the world for Christ. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. I know one person, I'm going to play favorites here with favorites. I know one person has a favorite song that she wanted to sing. What? What? After we sing the missions letter. <laughs> Harold, I'm sitting down. I'm not going to try to fix that one. Praise the Lord. Oh. <laughs> okay, our missionary tonight is the Kindles in Papua New Guinea. Praise the Lord for his goodness and mercy. I arrived back in Papua New Guinea the last week of August. The Lord has blessed in a mighty way. We have seen a total of 43 souls accept Christ in the last seven weeks. There is nothing sweeter this than bringing souls to Christ. What a joy it is to serve the lovely Lord. I am pleased to report that all the churches are growing and doing well. There are 29 believers that will be receiving baptism in the near future. God is so good. We are in the process of getting the materials needed to build the fourth permanent church building. It is in Barama Village. At the present time, we are getting the timber we need to build the church. We have been hindered because the shortcut road to the village is out due to political dispute. That, that means that we have to take the long road <clears throat> around the mountain to get to the village. The trip now takes us almost five hours to get there. We covet your prayers. There are many problems we have to overcome to get the building built. The newest work we have started, the Angalago Baptist Church is growing in the Lord as well as in numbers. We purchased ground about a year ago and now the people are ready for us to put up a semi-permanent building. That means I need to build a building made of the traditional brush materials with a tin roof. Again, we want to thank each one of, each and every one of you who have a part in our ministry to make a big difference for eternity. Please continue to pray that the Lord would guide and show us his favor. Thank you. Anybody have? 
Ashley? 106.
Pray over the offering, please. Dear Father, Lord, thank you for this evening. Lord, thank you for the opportunity we have to be in your house once again. Father, thank you for keeping us safe this week so far. Lord, I pray that you be with uh, the ones who are not able to be here tonight. Pray you watch over them. Be with the ones that are uh, battling sickness and have surgeries coming up. Father, now I pray that you be with this offering. I pray that you really help us as we endeavor to support our missionaries and be with Pastor and as he preaches, give him the words. Lord, I pray that you speak to our hearts in Christ's name. 
says a psalm of psalms or a psalm or song for the sons of Korah to the chief musician upon Mahalath, Leonoth, Mashal of Heman, the Ezraite. All right. O Lord God, my salvation, I have cried day and night before thee. Let my prayer come before thee. Incline thine ear unto my cry. For my soul is full of troubles and my life draweth nigh unto the grave. I am counted with them that go down into the pit. I am as a man that hath no strength. Free among the dead, like the slain that lie in the grave, whom thou rememberest no more, they are cut off from thy hand. Thou hast laid me in the lowest pit, in darkness, in the deeps. Thy wrath lieth hard upon me, and thou hast afflicted me with all thy waves. Selah. Thou hast put away mine acquaintance far from me. Thou hast made me an abomination unto them. I am shut up, and I cannot come forth. Mine eye mourneth by reason of affliction, Lord. I have called daily upon thee, have stretched out my hands unto thee. Wilt thou show wonders to the dead? Shall the dead arise and praise thee? Selah. Shall thy loving kindness be declared in the grave, or thy faithfulness in destruction? Shall thy wonders be known in the dark, and thy righteousness in the land of forgetfulness? But unto thee have I cried, O Lord, and in the morning shall my prayer prevent thee. Lord, why castest thou off my soul? Why hidest thou thy face from me? I'm afflicted and ready to die for my youth up. While I suffer thy terrors, I am distracted. Thy fierce wrath goeth over me. Thy terrors have cut me off. They came round me like water. They compassed me about together. Lover and friend hast thou put far from me, and mine acquaintance into darkness. How many of you guys have heard of the... um, Acronym SAD, S A D. Who knows what that stands for? Seasonal a- a- Affective Disorder, right? Okay, and basically, SAD is a medical way to describe what happens to some of us when fall turns to winter uh, or summer turns to fall and we get depressed. Anybody here like that? Just the, it rains and it gets cold and you just. It's just something, it's like a, a, a wet blanket gets thrown over you, you know? Some people love, some people love the winter and love the cold air and they get excited about it, all right? And other people are normal. And no, I'm just kidding. Um, sad. This, uh, this psalm is a very unique psalm. It is a dark and sad and melancholy psalm from start, start to finish. You know, there are other sad psalms and discouraging psalms in the Bible, but they all end on a positive note. They all end uh, with somebody putting their hope in God. And this one, what's the last word? Darkness. There's no happiness in this psalm. None whatsoever. And it's kind of a a difficult psalm to deal with um, because certainly the things that the psalmist says here are not uh, meant to be swallowed whole, not all of them. This is, uh, this is one of those psalms that reminds us that God uh, really uses human beings and the emotions of human beings when he wrote the word of God. You know, I believe that the Bible is, from start to finish, from beginning to end, 
the word of God, that it is completely pure and absolutely perfect in every way, that it's inspired all scripture. We have it on the wall, all scriptures given by inspiration of God. We believe in, in the sufficiency of scripture and the, uh, the inspiration of scripture and all of that. But one there are also, uh, in the scripture, there are uh, divinely inspired words that are there, uh, not necessarily, you have to read them in their context, and part of that context uh, is sometimes God just uh, records the heart and soul of the human penman of the book. And what I'm trying to say here is that... Um, a lot of the things that this psalmist here is saying, uh, I don't think he, he means literally. For instance, he says, my life draweth nigh into the grave. I think what he meant is he feels like his life is drawing nigh to the grave. All right? This is the psalm of somebody that's going through a dark valley of depression. Okay? Matthew Henry said that this, is the, this psalm is a description of a sick man's sufferings. Um, Spurgeon said that the title upon Haleth, I can't even say this, Leonoth, okay, means, it's been said to mean, upon an afflictive sickness. And what, what said is reality, felt like reality to him. And God is uh, recording the emotions of this psalmist. How many of you know that we have emotions? We're emotional creatures, right? How many of you sometimes know things in your head that you can't make the rest of you, you know, uh, follow along with, all right? This psalm, I think, offers some hope for that. So I'm going to give, I'm going to talk for a little bit tonight about depression. It's a depressing topic, right? I'm going to talk about depression for a few minutes, and um, I think it's a, a, a topic that all of us, uh, if we haven't dealt with it before, uh, we will deal with it at some point. So point number one um, is this, everyone experiences some depression. Everybody experiences some depression, okay? Um, either you are depressed or you're going to be depressed uh, or you have been depressed Everybody, everybody goes through highs and lows in life. And it's not unspiritual to have fluctuating emotions, okay? It's not unspiritual for us to feel the highs and the lows. That's just, that, that's, some of that is chemical and some of that is physical. And it's not uh, necessarily a sign that we are away from God or that there's something wrong with us spiritually. Now, it certainly can be a sign of that, but it isn't always. And it's appropriate sometimes for us to have emotions that are varied. I believe that uh, joy should be the overwhelming uh, emotion of the Christian life. The, the New Testament says rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice, right? We should be joyful people but there's also, the Bible also says that there's a time to weep. You know, how many have ever been to a funeral before? I'm sure everybody's been to a funeral. I know everybody's been to a funeral just about here besides the ch children. And uh, it would be highly inappropriate, inappropriate for me to go to a funeral all giddy and happy and joking around and, you know, hey, did you hear this new joke? And, you know walk up to the people at the graveside or walk up to people next to the casket and show them some fun, funny meme I saw on, on the internet, that would be highly un, inappropriate. We understand there's a time to weep, right? There's a time to mourn. There's a time to be angry. There's a time to be low. Everybody experiences some depression. Everybody experiences some highs and lows, Okay. And just because you're going through a time of depression, a high and low, doesn't mean that there's necessarily something wrong with you spiritually. So that's number one. Number two is this. Knowledge is not always sufficient to ward off depression. Now, it's interesting here. 
The man that wrote this psalm, his name is awesome. His name is He-Man, right? Remember He-Man from the 80s? My childhood coming back right here. But He-Man is actually written about several different places in the Bible. And He-Man, um, uh, in 1 Kings chapter 4, it's talking about Solomon's wisdom. And it compares the wisdom of Solomon. It says, Solomon... His so wisdom excelled the wisdom of all the children of the east country and all the wisdom of Egypt, for he was wiser than all men, than uh, Ethan the Ezraite and He-Man. Saying, it's talking about how wise Solomon is, and it says, Solomon is so wise, he is even wiser than He-Man. And it's talking about the guy that wrote this song. All right? I think uh, another thing you'll see about this, the man that wrote this psalm is that he was uh, a, like a, the choral leader, the uh, choir director for uh, the temple. He was a man that was skilled in music and skilled in the worship of God. This is a guy that knew some things about God in his head. But when he wrote this, he was having a hard time moving them from his head to his heart, moving them from his head to his emotions. And sometimes uh, you're going through a hard time and you know God is good. It's hard to feel like God is good, right? You know God is in control, but it's hard to feel like God is in control because your emotions are taking you for a ride. Um, you know you're supposed to be nice and kind, uh, and it's hard to be nice and to be kind. Knowledge, just knowing, uh, always sufficient to ward off depression. That's one of the reasons why we need to be close to the Lord. We need our heart to stay close to God, okay? And we need God uh, to control not just our mind, but also our hearts. Stay close to him, and, and he can help us through these times of depression. Third point, by the way, these points are not original to me, okay? Uh, some brother Adam said if uh, would be a fool, to not use someone else's, borrow someone else's stick to beat the devil. So um, this, I did not come up with this stuff myself. Number three is this. Um, some people tend toward melancholy. Some people tend toward melancholy. Okay? How many know that peop, there, people have a dif, different emotional temperatures, right? How many of you know somebody that is always either really, really high or really, really low. Do you know anybody like that? Nobody? <laughs> All right. Anybody? Just like, follow, give me some indication that I'm not just talking to a blank wall sometime. You don't have to shout amen and run around the auditorium, but just nod your head. Great. All right. You know somebody that's, that's, that's up and down, and then there are some people that they tend to stay down a lot. They just sort of have a, a, melancholy, uh, a melancholy emotional state most of the time. And then there are some people, they just seem to be kind of on the high end most of the time. And some people, people I don't understand, are just like even keeled all the time. Like they're never all that excited. They're never all that sad. They're just the same constantly, all right? I know people, like, and you know people like that too, I'm sure, okay? But some people just, they have a natural tendency towards depression and towards melancholy. And if you're one of those people, you need to know yourself well enough. And, and uh, if it's one of your family members, maybe know them. Know yourself well enough to, to work extra hard at guarding your heart and fighting that all the time. Stay in the word of God. Stay close to the Lord. Uh, stay in prayer, stay around godly people, okay? Some people tend towards melancholy. I think um, that the fact that this guy was an artsy guy, a musician, a leader of these, uh, of these uh, musicians here, um, I think maybe there, there's a tie between people that are very, very highly creative and people that struggle with depression. Um, I don't know, but some people, some people just tend to, to be more melancholy than others. Number four is this, and I want you to understand this one, okay? 
uh, depression can have a physical source. Depression can have a physical source. Um, how many of you have ever known somebody? This would be a good time to nod your head. All right. How, how many of you have ever known somebody that got sick and their personality changed? You know what I'm talking about? Maybe they were an upbeat kind of person and they were going through sickness, they were going through pain, and they became a somber person, melancholy, depressed, sad, okay? Um, pain and sickness can affect your personality. Sometimes when you get discouraged and when you get depressed, it's not, it, it, sometimes it has a spiritual source, and I don't want to minimize that at all, but sometimes there's a physical source. Sometimes it's a sign of something that's, that's wrong with you physically. You know, you all know I'm a, a huge fan of Charles Spurgeon. I've read all kinds of books about Charles Spurgeon and um, read a lot of his books. Not all of them. That would take a long time. Um, but one of the books that I read as a young preacher, and I've read many times, he has a book called Lectures to My Students where he writes to would-be preachers. And he's got a chapter in that book called The Minister's Fainting Fits. And in The Minister's Fainting Fits, he tells his students about his own struggles with depression. He fought depression his entire life. I mean, he really struggled with it. Um, here's what he had to say about depression. He said, don't think it unspiritual to remember you have a body. Sometimes the physician is as needful as the minister. So there can be physical reasons why you uh, are going through depression, okay? Maybe it's, uh, maybe you, you it, it could be, I, I, I read a list, these are the things that uh, someone said may have led to Spurgeon's depression, uh, chemical imbalance, illness, trauma, loneliness, increased mental exertion, fame, failure, controversy, weather, nervousness. You know, I'll tell you, whenever we have a really, really big day at church and lots of people are here in the sermon, I've, I feel like there's a, I have a lot of liberty in preaching and it just is like a really, really high day. I am always Monday, the Monday after. I'm just be honest. All right, it's like, uh, it's like a roller coaster. The low follows the high. And that's a pretty common, uh, I'm, I've talked to lots of preachers about that. That's a pretty common thing. All right, sometimes you go through a, maybe a hardship, uh, a difficulty, and it, it brings about some depression. It brings about some, some stuff. Sometimes, uh, you know, you just need to go to the doctor and, uh, and, and get some help. All right? That's not necessarily a sign of weak spirituality. Now, I also want to say depression can have a spiritual cause too. And if your heart's not right and your head's not right, then you need to fix that um, and, and not constantly you know, look to pills for the answer. But it can have a physical source. It can have a physical source. Okay, a couple more points here. When you're depressed... Don't isolate yourself. I think this uh, psalmist here shows signs that that's what he did here at the end. The last several verses here, he talks about how uh, his friends are all gone far from him. Mine acquaintances are put into darkness, he says. But what he's saying is what a lot of, a lot of depressed and, and uh, down people say is, nobody cares about me. Nobody loves me. Nobody understands what I'm going through. Nobody, nobody knows. He was like, nobody knows the trouble I see, right? Have you ever felt that way? I'm sure you have. Well, I can tell you the certainty that when you feel like that, you're wrong, okay? You're wrong. Number one, there's a God in heaven that wants us to cast our cares on him because he he cares for you. He cares for me. We're going through. We sing that song, Does Jesus Care? Oh, yes, he cares. I know he cares. His heart was touched with my grief, right? 
Jesus knows what you're going through. He understands that. So he knows what you're going through. But also, look around. There are, there are, are, are godly people that I know in this church that if you went to them and you told them that you were going through a hard time, they care. They'd pray for you. Uh, if there's something that, they could do, that could be done about it, they'd help you with it. Okay? They'd spend time with you. Um, there are people around you that care about you. And what, we ha- what happens when we get low and we get depressed is too often what we try to do is isolate ourselves from people. We just want to, you know, go up on top of a mountain and, and cry or something. And that is not what we need to do when we're, we're going through a time of depression. You need to, instead of isolate yourself, you need to surround yourself with people that care about you, that love you. Okay? Um, uh, preacher said, I heard say, a preacher said that uh, when you're depressed, the best thing to do is get some friends and go to Dairy Queen. He said, I don't know what will help, the ice cream or the friends, but one of them will help. Okay? And uh, that might not sound that spiritual, but I think there's some, tr- there's some wisdom there. So don't isolate yourself when you're down. All right, number six, if you're keeping count, number six is this. Depressed people uh, often blame God. If you read this, and this is why I think we can't take all of this stuff, uh, just swallow it whole here, because he makes a lot of accusations against God that are just straight up not true. Um, he says that God is the cause of his problems, that God has pushed him down into the grave, that God is causing all of his acquaintances to be far from him. You know, and a lot of times when you're around depressed people, they want to blame God for all of their problems. It's God's fault. God doesn't care about me. God doesn't love me. If God loved me, I wouldn't be going through this. Okay? And it's foolish. It's foolish to talk that way. Don't blame God for your problems. Look to God as the answer to your problems. Let me give you one more point and I'll be done here. There is one note of hope in this psalm, and that is that... Again, great name, isn't it? He-Man. He-Man was depressed and He-Man was awfully low. This is the saddest psalm in the whole Bible, but at least he knew... place. There's some hope there, all right? And when you are sick with de- despair and depression, you need to remember you can always turn to God. Look to him, okay? You can always bring your problems to the Lord. Never get so hopeless that you forget that God cares and that God loves you and that God can, can help, all right? Um, so Psalm 88, interesting Psalm Sad psalm, very sad psalm, but I think it's, it's good for us to in here because I do think it's a picture uh, and, and, and helps us to realize that God understands our human emotions. And uh, when we go through and we feel this way, we're not the first to feel this way and we won't be the last. And God knows what's going on. All right, we need to turn to him. All right, let's, uh, let's take out our prayer sheets and go over some of these prayer requests here. I want to draw your attention on the back page uh, to 